Okay, the title of uh, our presentation is Policia 2.0, a collaborative mapping of the history of Sao Paulo between the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, an experiment of open science in digital humanities. Um, I'm going to read my presentation in order to respect the time and maybe also to respect uh, the English language a little bit. Um, I will present along with my colleague and collaborator, Andrew Britt. In the first few minutes, I will introduce the platform, highlighting some of the key characteristics, challenges, and possibilities we see in it. Andrew will then discuss two examples of how the platform has been utilized in its better state. Framed by open science and digital humanities, this project aims to design and build a computational platform for collaborative historical research. It foresees the development and release in the World Wide Web of a digital historical cartographic database of the city of Sao Paulo with a particular focus on the period of its urban and industrial modernization, 1870 to 1940. Uh, let's imagine a hypothetical situation here just to understand the aim, the main aims of the platform. We have here a researcher and she's saying, I studied the history of circuses in the city. She can upload her data to the platform, data that can be specialized. And as a kind of image at reward, she can have maps and visualizations to her own uh, material, a final thesis or article and so on. Let's imagine a second researcher, and she's saying here, I studied the history of crimes in the city. In the same way, she's, uh, she can upload her data and have her own maps for her own use. And see, uh, up to now that the platform is enriching with different and not linked with different researchers. And Let's imagine still a third researcher, and she's saying here, mm, how interesting. Wherever we had circuses, we had no crimes. Of course, this is a schematic and very theoretical uh, situation. But the important thing here is that she is not uploading anything to the platform, but she is using it as a kind of meta source for her own thoughts, insights, investigations, and so on. Uh, it shows that we intend to offer the platform also a, a, as a kind of meta source for researchers. But at this point of our conversation, I think it's clear that the main challenge, or maybe one of the main challenges, is the geocoding. Uh, who, whoever has worked with urban history and maps and know exactly the diffi difficulties to locate address of the past. Of course, this is a very uh, well-known and developed technology today, but for the past, it's uh, still a big problem. And we are very proud that we have succeed in doing this. It's, uh, I can say that it's a historical technological tool, uh, only possible with this very strict collaboration between these two uh, tribes. In the Q&A session, maybe we can talk a little bit more of in how we could achieve this. Uh, to conclude, I would like to highlight a few additional features about the behind the scenes work of Policia 2.0, which to our eyes make it somewhat atypical in the landscape of large 
collaborative digital humanities projects. We are happy to discuss them in more depth in the QA session. Policea 2.0 grew out of the work of the research lab, History Maps and Computers, which is based on the Barulhos campus of the Federal University of Sao Paulo, UNIFESP. UNIFESP is a public university that principally serves students from low-income families, many of whom also, um, actually, uh, sorry, many of whom are also the first in their families to attend college. In addition, the UNIFESP campus is situated in a peripheral low-income neighborhood in the Sao Paulo region. Limited resources on both individual and institutional scales have required creative approach to securing funding for such this resource-intensive digital humanities project. The majority of students that make up the Polisea team identify as black and female. The team is comprised of students at multiple stages in their educational and professional trajectories, from undergraduates through postdoctoral fellows. These students have participated in all aspects of the design and elaboration of the mapping platform. Polisea is the product of a multi-institutional collaboration between UNIFESP, Emory University, the State Archives of Sao Paulo, and the Brazilian National Institute for Spatial Research. While such collaborations on digital humanities projects between researchers at universities in the Global South and the Global North United States are common, Often the technology is produced in countries of the global north and content expertise is offered by researchers from institutions in the global south. In the case of Polisea, this circumstance is somewhat inverted. The technology is produced in Brazil and many of the collaborators in the US are specialists in the history of Brazil. For example, my colleague Andrew Britt. The code base and algorithms used by the platform were developed by computational students and professors from the Polisea project team, the majority of them from INPE and UNIFESP, in direct collaboration with histor historians involved. Well, thank you for your attention up to now. I talked about the platform in more theoretical terms, and now you have the word of uh, Andrew Britt to show these in more practical ones. Thank you very much. Andrew, please. Yeah. Thank you so much, Louise. And thank you again to the organizers of the, uh, the symposium. It's fantastic to be here with you all and to showcase a bit of this project, which as Louise mentioned is still uh, in its beta stage or the platform is still in its beta stage. I'm gonna share my screen now and hopefully that'll Work. Can I get a thumbs up if, if you're seeing a map? Beautiful. So you're seeing here a, a map of uh, the Pawisea 2.0 platform, um, specifically over uh, the historic center city of Sao Paulo. Uh, the platform already contains a good bit of, uh, of raster and vector data that we have uploaded as a, um, a collaboration, the dozens of us at many institutions, historians, computer scientists, and other from other disciplines that are involved in this project. Um, the raster data that's most relevant, uh, I think, or, or most evident here are um, eight layers, eight maps, raster maps from 1868 to 1930, really capturing, uh, thank you, Murph, capturing this crucial period of Sao Paulo's uh, modernization, going from a city of about 30,000 to a a metropolis of about a million. I'm going to show you <clears throat> two specific layers that have been added of, uh, of vector data, uh, added by, by and through collaborators and collaborations, some involving us uh, on the project team and at other times 
uh, most interestingly to me, involving people who have, who have nothing to do with the team, right? Who are not involved in the building of this platform uh, in any way. Uh, the first of the collaborations is um, uh, comes from uh, one of those uh, one of those uh, groups outside of Palise, outside the Palise team, um, and a, a bit of context about the layer that they've contributed. Um, the spatial development of São Paulo in, in this period from 1870s through 1930, and, and really since the present. Um, has has hinged upon the systemic uh, and systematic marginalization, displacement, and destruction of Black bodies and Black spaces, uh, and spaces that the people of African descent have produced. Uh, a research collective, a community research collective named Black Cartographies, uh, which is led by Pedro Vinicius Alves, Carolina Piai Vieira, and Haisa Albano de Oliveira is working to contest this historic uh, and contemporary marginalization and silencing. Uh, their work includes original research, it includes conducting walking tours, and other types of programming to create visibility of and for Black residents of Sao Paulo or Paulistanos as they're known, and to unearth uh, Black spaces or, or what in Portuguese are described as territorios negros, uh, that have long been buried or silenced or um, or marginalized in, in some way. Last year, uh, or excuse me, two years ago now, they contributed a layer to the Palisea platform, which I'll activate here, called Cartogra Cartografia Negra, or Black Cartography, highlighting some of the key points um, in this geography, in the, the Black geography or geography of African descent uh, in Sao Paulo. Many of these sites uh, have been uh, the, the physical or material visible manifestations of them historic from uh, 19th and 20th century or earlier have been have been disappeared and erased. Uh, so this work was a, a, a mechanism, a means for them to create greater visibility for sites that they're highlighting in other ways as well. Um, some of the sites include, uh, for instance, um, here in the the southern portion of this map. Um, can you all see my mouse and highlighting over that? Nice. So this is the uh, the Cemeterio dos Afritos, the first uh, public cemetery in, in Sao Paulo that was a, a burial grounds for many people of African descent that is now located in Sao Paulo's uh, Little Tokyo or Little Japan. So it's a site that's, that's um, not well known and not easily visible in the urban landscape. Um, other sites here, as you might imagine, uh, all, all the sites include information, uh, mostly in the case of this layer, uh, pros about uh, the significance of these sites. And most of these are in Portuguese. Uh, Luis talked about the, the kinds of triangulations and the layering that can yield interpretive historical insights. And we already see that happening in at this beta stage where there's just a little bit of data starting to accrue, a, a little bit of historical information. One of the master students from the Pawisea team has done research on public fountains in Sao Paulo, which were key sites for, uh, for association for the social and uh, the social lives of people of African descent. So corresponding, uh, comparing these two later layers starts to reveal and, and illustrate some of those connections. The last layer I'll highlight in our final minute is, uh, is pictured here in the 1970s, Sao Paulo's military, uh, excuse me, Brazil's military dictatorship constructed uh, the largest elevated highway in Latin America, tearing through the center of the city. It's known popularly as the Big Worm or the Minho Cão. Um, in a class I taught at Northwestern University uh, a year, no, two, two years ago now, um, we used archival documents original from the Department of Expropriations in Sao Paulo, georeferenced them, and then created a layer of uh, a demolished block beneath the, the Minho Count, beneath the Big Worm. So these are the types of collaborations that, uh, that this portal is, is working to facilitate that we're working to facilitate not only among academic publics but among um, a, whole, a whole array of publics. Thank you all so much for your attention. Uh, look forward to talking to you on the Q&A.